Hey guys, in this lesson, I give you an introduction to Anime Studio's physics system. With Anime Studio, you have the ability to apply physics to the objects on your screen. This allows your objects to interact with gravity and with each other, and all of this is customizable within the layer settings. So to show you a simple example, we'll first draw three objects on the screen. So open up a new document and grab your add point tool and make sure that the sharp corners option is selected as well as the auto fill and auto weld. Come over here to your fill and stroke settings and I'll just adjust the color to be red for this particular example and I'll click OK. Now I'm going to start by drawing out a flat line like this. Then I'll draw a vertical line or close to vertical like this. Then come down and then over. And from here I'm going to draw a gradual slope going up. So I'll just Come up here to the first point, click and drag all the way up like that. And then I can come down like this. And then apply the final point right there. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's just to give us a playground or a sandbox to play with when we start playing with the physics. So there is your basic um, base for our little playground here. Now the next thing, make a new layer by going to the new layer button and choosing vector. And we'll name this circle. And we can also name this first layer as well. And we can name this base or something similar like that. Now under the circle layer, come over here to your draw shape tool and choose the oval tool from your properties and come over here to the fill and let's make it a different color than that of the base. So we'll just make it green for this example and click OK. Now I will simply draw out an oval or if I choose to I can draw out a perfect circle by holding in shift and hitting the mouse button and dragging to create that circle and releasing. Now the difference between an oval and a circle, which you can play with, um, there will be differences depending on how the physics work because an oval isn't perfect, so when it rolls, it'll act a little bit differently. So that's just something to keep in mind and something you can play with later on. Now finally, let's add one more layer. We'll name this rectangle. And then come over here to your shape tool properties and select the rectangle. Choose a different fill color. In this case, I'll choose something like purple or blue. And I will draw a pretty vertical rectangle. I'm using very basic shapes so you can get an idea of what the physics engine in Anime Studio can do. Now the next step is to create a group layer. So let's come over here to the new layer and choose group. And we can just name this physics layer. Now take the three layers that you have um, created so far, select the top one, hold in shift, select the bottom one, and drag them into that folder. Now you'll notice that they are in the folder when they are more indented or if you hit the arrow on your physics layer folder you can see that they hide and reappear accordingly. Now double click on your physics layer, click the physics tab, and choose enable physics. Now from here you can choose the direction of the gravity and the magnitude of the gravity. So if you don't want your objects to drop straight down, you can of course adjust that accordingly. 
So you can play around with that if you want to adjust your gravity in various ways, but I'll just leave it how it is for right now and click OK. Now we want to adjust the physics properties of each layer accordingly so that they all react differently. For starters, let's double click on the base, which should be our bottom layer in the physics layer. Go over here to physics. Now, enable physics should already be enabled because it should be under this group layer, which has all the physics already enabled. We want to make this a non-moving object. Basically, we don't want it to interact with anything other than making it basically a ground or a base point for our objects. So we'll just click that button and hit OK. Now, let's double click on the rectangle layer and go over to physics and choose this to start a sleep. What this will do is the rectangle will remain stationary until another physics-based object collides with it. In this case, we are going to use the circle to be that object. Once you've done that, click OK. Now, I want to move the circle so it's more up here towards the slope. So I'll just select the circle and take my translate layer option and just move the circle up like this. So now what should happen is the circle should react to the slope of the base and when it collides with the rectangle, the rectangle should react. So let's see how it plays out by hitting the play button above our timeline here. And as you can see, it did just that. It rolled down that slope and it accelerated as it rolled down and it hits the rectangle, causing the rectangle to shift back and forth. But at the same time, the rectangle also reacts to the base that we have set up here for the physics. Once we stop the animation, you'll notice that Anime Studio puts down a series of keyframes. This is because it just animated out the physics. And you can see now that all these keyframes make up one point of the animation. So when you render out your movie in whatever way you choose, that whole animation will play out accordingly. Now, if you're not happy with the animation, maybe there's something else you would like to happen with the physics, you can always go into each layer and adjust the physics properties accordingly. So for instance, we could go back into the circle layer by double clicking and going to the physics tab. And from here, we can adjust some settings. For instance, we have the non-moving object and start asleep options, which we already looked at. Lifetime frames allows us to either have the whole animation play out and stop like we have right now with zero frames, or we can specify how many frames we want it to play out before it loops back. So for instance, let's say we have 300 frames of animation in our timeline, and we want this circle to only animate for 20 frames of that. So we put in 20, and what will happen is we'll see that circle animate for 20 frames, and then it'll spring back up after 20 frames and fall down again and repeat and repeat and repeat until our timeline has exhausted its frames. So this would be good if you want to create um, the illusion that a lot of circles are dropping at once without having to actually animate and draw out all those circles dropping at once. Initial direction, you can adjust how initially the object moves. The initial speed, of course, the higher the speed number is, the faster it will go. Density, uh, the lower the density, the higher the collision reaction. So if you really want that rectangle to go somewhere, you would lower its density. The friction, the lower the friction, the more something will move. So if you want something to be really stubborn in the physics category, you'll up its friction. Springiness, if you really want something to bounce after it gets hit, you would raise the springiness. 
And there are a few more options below here that you can play with that will adjust the way the object moves. So I would recommend playing around with those. And if you have any questions on those, you can always check out the Anime Studio help file as well. But typically, these are the options I use up here. I don't really play much with the options down here. Not that they're not important. So we'll just click OK. Anyway, that is a basic overview of the physics abilities in Anime Studio. It's actually pretty neat to basically set up some physics with a few clicks of the button and watch the results. And I'm sure it could be useful for you guys in some of your projects that you may develop. Anyway, I hope you guys found this helpful.